Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I thought I would talk about how to survive econometrics. Yay. So, <laughs> econometrics. Um, now, it's the module people don't tend to like. And I'm saying this when I remember being obviously on it when I was an undergrad. So I'm in particular talking about intro econometrics. Normally the people that take it further start to really like it. Um, but yeah, so the intro modules, I remember my cohort hated it. And then I went on to actually get to teach some of the tutorials for econometrics. And yeah, it's just not a popular one. And I do know why that is. Um, I kind of feel sorry for the lecturers that have to teach the econometrics module. It's very difficult to make it sound fun. So I feel sorry for them in that sense. I think they already got given sort of a short straw, but in the same argument, um, I don't feel sorry for them because they completely make it not, they, they make it not very accessible. Because to them it makes complete sense. They use all this technical jargon and then don't explain it very well either. So if you then ask them, oh, what does that mean? Their explanation is normally just as complicated as the word they have given you. So for example, you're here quite early on, they'll start saying the word heteroscholasticity. Not only is it a horrible word to say, it's a horrible word to spell. You then ask them for clarification or what it means and they will just turn around and say to you, unequal variance. And to them, that is a completely perfect explanation and they expect you to understand what that means. Uh, yeah, I remember sitting there in the lecture theatre going, yeah, that has added no clarity to me on what heteroscasticity is or its sister, which is homoscasticity. So you get stuff like that. Um, now, it's you get two types of people. You get the people that just hated it and gave up on it quite early on and just accepted that econometrics wasn't for them um, and yeah, didn't stick with it. Or you get the other type of people, which luckily I fell into this category. I decided that I am going to try and keep at it on my own and really stick with it. And eventually it did all click um, and I found quite good coping strategies of how to get through it. And actually now I really do enjoy econometrics. And the one biggest thing, if there's any motivator as to why you should stick with econometrics and try and understand it and potentially even like it, um, it's a module where if you can do it, it's a really easy module to get a good grade in. It's a little bit like a maths exam, you know? If you can do it, you can get, the, you can nearly access 100%, right? It's not like an essay where you write a good essay, but they could still only give you 70 to 80%, for example. It's basically maths based, um, the theory exams anyway, so you can absolutely smash it. Okay, so, from having taught the tutorials and obviously from having done the modules myself, um, I feel I've come up with a sort of some ideas of how to help you get through it and hopefully this will help you. So, don't be freaked out. Yes, there will be a lot of content chucked at you and there will be a lot of words. And I shouldn't advocate missing lectures, I definitely shouldn't advocate that. I mean, I stopped turning up just because I felt it scared me more than it helped me. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't advocate that. I do, I do think go and listen, but I also think maybe take um, work with you, econometric space work with you, and try and sit with that as well. So, um, if anything, if even if you're just going to the lecture, one, so you're hearing all the jargon, um, but two, because then you're there and you know that this is dedicated econometric study time, um, rather than if you just didn't go, I don't feel that you would have the sort of um, self intrinsic motivation to sit at home and get on with it. So, maybe go and then take some with you. So my first thing that I recommend is I recommend the Introductory Econometrics textbooks by Waldridge. I know lots of universities use this. There's a couple of reasons why I think this is really good. Firstly, because if you Google Introductory Econometrics Waldridge PDF, there is a free PDF version online. Yeah, complete copyright, um, but I didn't put it up there, so that's not me. And that's good because these books aren't cheap and you need, you need a textbook at the end of the day. Now. I actually quite like, this is a really old edition, so the ones you'll get probably look a bit different on the front, I think it's like a green and blue. I do like the Waldridge textbook. Now, 
I need to preface that by saying when I miss a like, I don't mean it's fun. It's not fun, it's boring, okay? It's a, it's a very boring textbook, but it is good and it does explain things. So yes, you do need to just sit down and accept that it might be a little bit dull, but you do need to go through this and start from the beginning. Because even if you think you understand a few things, there's probably some flaws in your knowledge and it'll, it will really hold you back later on in the course. So start from the beginning, I remember, um, Obviously if it's online, but if you do buy a textbook and get a pencil, then you can sort of start underlining things. And they give you really helpful things. So there'll be loads of ex um, sort of like example, is it examples are called? Yeah, example boxes. Don't skip those. I know there's a massive tendency when you're reading a textbook to sort of skip the examples. Don't, if anything, they're probably the most important because it will give you a regression and it will start explaining things and they'll even give you like results. So they've gone and got a data set, they've chucked into whatever software they're using. This goes with Stata and um, they'll explain the results. So really read the examples in here. Now, what is it about the lectures that really puts people off econometrics? And I think what it is, is not that it's not relatable to everyday life because actually you know what quite a lot of econometrics is so for example if you wanted to figure out um the returns on an extra year of education so what does that mean that means on, on average how much extra am i going to sort of earn by getting an extra year of education now that's fascinating right that's something that you probably care about as an individual hence why you went to university in the first place econometrics is teaching you how we go on to model that um but you'll learn all the theory behind things so a common one you'll learn is something called blue um your OLSS, uh, ols needs to be blue and in class he'll just say okay that's the best linear unbiased estimator and he might even say what they say what linear means he'll say it's linear in parameters that just sounds like jargon, right? It doesn't mean very much to you. Actually, this gives really good examples of what it means to be linear in parameters, for example. Now, you need to understand that just so you don't get caught up on these kind of things because you then might get another question later on where it gives you some layouts of models and um, basically it'll ask you which one is blue for example and you would have to say well it has to be this one because it's the only one that's linear in parameters but if you don't know what linear parameters means then it's not going to help you okay so this book is actually quite nice and if you use the online edition or you get the newer edition and then it has all your statistical tables at the back because unfortunately you will be doing t-tests you will be doing f-tests and all of that stuff and it's quite nice to be using a consistent table rather than have to google it all the time so get your book and then you are sorted so yes it is boring but um i quite like this um now some of it is quite technical and it is i i kept saying that i was going to write a uh, student friendly econometrics textbook and uh yeah i started it and then obviously it's a big task never got around to it so i can't judge them for uh, for you know what the, this lacks because they at the end of the day they got a textbook out but there is another textbook which I think actually starts going down the more student friendly route um, and it is called, I will link it below if I remember, it is called Introduction to Econometrics for Finance. Now don't worry about for the finance part, we're not, we're not concerned about that but there's quite a bit in it that I actually quite like the explanations of. I think they're a bit more, a bit more less, a bit less technical and a bit more student friendly than Waldridge does. So maybe if you could sort of go between the two. So if there's something in here that um, you don't think is explained very well and it's still confusing you, then go for the uh, the other textbook, which I'll link down below. But I don't know a free version for that online. So um, that's all about your own peril. But maybe go to a get go to your, your university library and get that out. So that's my first bit of advice is I know it's going to be boring and but you are just going to have to sit down with the textbook and figure it out. Now if your um, econometrics lecturers are anything like the ones I experience, they're all, their lecture slides, it'll be something like you'll look at it, it'll be like one of a hundred and you will want to just give up. Please, please, please don't worry. Um, most of the time you can condense those 100 slides into sort of a sheet or two sides of A4, I promise you. So I, I did this for my students, I gave them, um, I think in total it was something like four sides of A4 and that covered I think five lectures. Uh, you really can condense it. 
so don't start thinking that this is something that has a ton of content it is not it's just they chuck in so much so many maybe examples or so much technical jargon and it just goes on and on and on because what you've got to appreciate is your lecturer to them this is like counting they, it makes perfect sense to them um so sometimes they don't always simplify it or explain it in the easiest and most accessible way that's kind of on you um that is what your university for in the first place though is to learn so it's gonna take your time so this isn't a module that you can typically just cram for okay um t tests f tests they look awfully confusing um when you first start doing them Actually, you can get by if you don't think you're going to need econometrics later on. You can get by by doing quite a procedural approach and just sort of learning the steps of how to do it. And then at the end of the day, it's it's definitely it's one of those questions. It's a math question, right? It's right or it's wrong, so that you can learn how to do it. Um, maybe I'll put in the sheets. I uh, I'll link the sheet somewhere that I once made. I can't guarantee it links perfectly with your course you're doing at university. But uh, yeah, I'll link in the help sheets that I once made um, for econometrics and maybe there's bits in it that will really help you. So there's certain tables, for example, that um, I've put in which really help you to interpret your regressions. So that's my first thing is sit down, spend some time, go through the textbook. There's, there's, no, there's no cheat way about it really. Um, tip number two. If you're doing econometrics, you're probably going to learn some kind of software. So um, I think most universities use Stata. I have, uh, I love Stata, but I also have big issues with the fact that universities use Stata. My biggest one is the fact that uh, it is not helpful when it comes to jobs. Uh, jobs do not use Stata. Uh, jobs use other stuff like Excel and Python and R. Uh, definitely not Stata or Eviews. But hey ho, it's your course. You're going to have to get on with it. It is going to be horrible to start with. I think I mentioned this in my top tips video for an economics degree. You are gonna hate it to start with because you're not gonna really know what you're doing. You're gonna type stuff in. Uh, it's gonna come up error messages and so on and so forth. So again, this is something else that just takes time. The more practice you have on Stata, the better. And the more practice you have on it, when it's not an assessed piece of work that you're trying to complete, again, the better. So please just take the time to sit there and do some work on it. I know it's horrible, um, but once you get the hang of it, you can just start typing it. You'll know the commands off by heart and you start typing them in. My biggest advice here, and if you haven't started learning SATA yet, it'll mean nothing to you, but maybe um, if you've watched this video and then you eventually start learning SATA, you'll know what I'm talking about. Use do files. Don't, don't not use a do file. Start making a do file from day one and start writing out the code because one, it helps with you, um, well, helps with you learning it and helps you memorizing the commands. But number two, if you're starting to typing things into the actual SATA um, command box, then obviously at the end of your lesson or the end of your practice, when you close it all down, you lose it and you can't go back to it. And I promise you, let's say that you use that one week and you don't go back to it till the next week, you will have forgotten everything. So if you have make yourself a do file, you can save it and then you can open it up again the next week and you can start looking over things and you'll be like, ah, oh, okay, I get it now. Um, I typed in, um, I typed in this instead of this. So I typed in, um, I don't know, I can't, I can't think of how you make a mistake now. <laughs> I typed in a square bracket and not a round bracket and then I got this error message. Or I typed in gen and I, did, I forgot to type it in the new variable name or something like that. This will all make sense when you're learning Stata, I promise you. But it's gonna take time, so please don't get put off by it. It's very intuitive once you start to understand it. And if anything, what links up brilliantly with this uh, Walters book is if your school, uh, school, if your uni's using it, there's data sets that go along with this, and there's questions in here. So they're computer exercises, and it will say to use a certain certain data set, and you put that into Stata and then you can work through it and try and answer the questions in this book. So this is another reason why I like Waldridge is because it actually links up to computer exercises that you can do in Stata. Again, at the beginning, it'll be horrible and it'll be quite boring. But once you get the hang of it, it'll be quite fun. I well, know it won't be fun, it's never fun. Um, it'll just make sense and that, that's nice, isn't it? Practice really does make perfect in terms of um, econometric. Any practice questions that you have access to, please attempt them. Again, this isn't something you wanna start trying to do on the fly. And then I suppose my last piece of advice probably sounds quite counterintuitive. Try and refrain from Googling too much when it comes to getting stuck on econometrics. And the reason why there's been a few things that I've got stuck on and I've Googled it and you get these absolute sort of econometric wizards that are typing things on the internet and it's way above the level you need. 
and it's so complicated and it will just scare you and freak you out so until you start um, getting a bit more confident with it and knowing what you're looking for that you could look at something and say no that's not what I'm after then maybe kind of refrain from doing so there's only one caveat to that there's a brilliant YouTuber called Ben Lambert and he does YouTube videos on Econometrics and some of his videos are really, really good. Some of them, again, are probably a little bit too difficult, um, but yeah, some of them are good and I like the explanations he uses. So uh, yeah, that's the one I would uh, use if I am looking for help with Econometrics. But other than that, please stick with it. Econometrics actually really isn't as bad as it comes across. It's just scary to start with. I really wish lecturers would change their approach on how they teach it but again like I said to them this is just like counting so they don't they can't they can't grasp what you're not getting unfortunately um but stick with it and I really hope that you succeed so anyway that's all from me bye guys